Hey guys, I'm back with another calculator programming tutorial. Today we're going to be talking about Peter Telema's ICE compiler. We're just going to be going over uh, some of the basics of ICE and text-based functions that ICE includes. So what the ICE compiler is, is it's a program, an on-calculator program, that when you run it will take one of your programs that you've written in a basic-like language, which is ICE's own special language, and it compiles it into an assembly program that runs much faster than a basic program would. So all you need to get started is the ICE program on your calculator and the C libraries. So I'm going to link to both of them in the description and you can click on those and put them on your calculator uh, you can read the readmes and they'll tell you how to do it but uh, I'm not going to be going over that today so we're going to go into our program menu and uh, I have two programs here this one uh, just allows me to see what color I'm looking at sorry for the lighting it's uh, pretty bad but it'll just let me see uh, what the idea of each color is. So that's the reason I have that program. Um, and then I also have ICE. When I run it, it looks like this. It says no programs found because we haven't made any programs yet. Okay, so I'm going to go into my program menu and I'm going to create a new program. And I want my program to be called test. So that's going to be the name of the assembly program, but this is just the source code that's going to get compiled. So I'm just going to call this test src for source. Now every ICE program has to start off with the token imaginary I. So I'm going to select it from catalog and then I'm going to give this program a name. So I'm going to call it test. So this name, the name that you put after the imaginary I at the, in the very first line of your ICE program is going to be what the program will be named once it's an assembly program. So if I run ICE right now, I could compile this into an assembly program called test which is what we'll eventually do. So let's take a look at the most basic display function in ICE, which will act like uh, TI, the TIOS's built-in operation for displaying text on the home screen. What we do is, first of all, we're going to want to clear home. Uh, and this just helps uh, make sure the cursor is in the correct position, not mess anything up. Then we're going to select the display function. And we can just use this exactly like we would use the display function uh, normally. So you can just say hello. Um, and then we'll clear home. And this would be a program, but that would clear immediately. So let's add in another basic function that hopefully you already know, which is pause. So let's go over what this program does. Um, this program would work in just basic language without the imaginary eye uh, test line at the beginning. So basically, it'll clear screen, display hello. It'll pause, which means it waits for the user to press enter, and then once you do, it'll clear home and the program will exit. So, to make test source uh, into an assembly program, I'm going to run ICE. I'm going to select test source from the list. It's the only one on there at the moment. It'll tell me that it's successfully compiled. I can press any key to continue, and now you'll see I have a program called test. Uh, because that's what we named the assembly program and test source. So I'll run test. We get the words hello uh, at the very top left of the screen because when we did clear home, the cursor position was set there. So it'll display that. Now we're on the pause line and it's waiting for us to press enter. When we do, it'll clear the screen and exit the program. Okay, so uh, that's basically all we need to know for outputting lines to the home screen. Uh, it's not a function that we'll probably use a whole lot in assembly just because with assembly there are so many other things that we could do. So let's go into our test source and let's get rid of that display line. So right now let's say we wanted to use uh, text that is TI's built in small text. So if you see up here the small text normal float it's the same size text that you'd get if you use the actual text function which uh, 
draws text on the draw screen. So ICE can also use that text and it can also scale that text. It's just that you have to be in a graphics mode to access it. So let's set up the graphics mode. Now a lot of ICE commands will use debt, which is in matrix, math, and it's the first option. Uh, so to set up the graphics library, we just do debt zero. Now we want to close the graphics library, we do debt one. You want to have, if you have a debt zero in your program, make sure you have a debt one somewhere later uh, that it'll reach. So we want to do this after our pause because if we do it before the pause, the graphics screen will close before we press enter, which means that it'll happen super fast and we won't be able to see it. So I'm going to throw in a debt one right after the pause. So what's going to happen is it's going to open up the graphics screen. It's going to pause. Once we press enter, it closes the graphics screen, clears the home again, and exits the program. Okay, so let's just output some text to the screen. We're going to use the command debt, and you can see this time I selected it from the catalog instead of the matrix menu. We're going to use debt 18. Now the text we want to output, so let's choose hello again. And now an X and Y coordinate value. The screen is 320 pixels by 240 pixels. Uh, up in this corner is 0, 0, and it goes on from there. So if we want to put it up near the top left corner, we might do, say, 20X and 50Y. Okay? Now... Uh, we're going to leave text color the same for now. Let's just run that and see what happens. So I run ICE, choose the program to compile. It'll automatically overwrite that test program that we had before, so we don't have to delete that. We can run that, and you can see we get the hello. It's 50 down and 20 to the left. We run that again, and you'll see also the status bar goes away because in assembly, you're actually able to use the full screen, which is uh, positive over basic. Okay, so let's go back into test source. Now, say, okay, so let's let's just take a look at the same way to do that, just with different commands. So there's a command called uh, it's det17, and this will just output a string. So I can say det. Where's the o? Det hello. Okay, uh, det17 hello. Now, we don't have coordinates, and that's because it'll output it at the cursor position, which we can set. So, um, to set the X and Y values for the cursor, we just need to do uh, debt 19, and then our X and our Y, so 20X, 50Y. So this will act the exact same as the one command that we had previous. Okay, let's compile it with ICE and run test again and you can see it looks the exact same so it just took us to another command uh, that's because night debt 19 will set the cursor position and debt 17 outputs a string so if you want to add the coordinates along with the string use debt 18 if you want to set them separately use debt 19 and 17. okay so we can leave this for now because i don't feel like retyping that debt 18 uh, let's take a look at the foreground and background colors of text. So right now the default background color is uh, nothing. It's transparent. Uh, but we can set one and to do that we can do debt 20 comma our color. So I'll leave a link uh, in the description to this program, but I can just select a color. So let's go for a red. 224 is the value for red. Um, this is a default uh, color palette that's used a lot in assembly. So uh, it's colors from 0 to 255. 0 is black, 255 is white, and you get a fair amount of color choices. So now my background color is going to be red. To set the foreground color, which is like the actual letter part, uh, I can do debt 21 and say I want to set that to blue um, I'll just check in color ice and it looks like 16 will get us that so I'll do 16 here 
and now we should get blue text on a red background. So we'll run ice, test source is compiled. Let's go into test, run it, and it's hard to see the words now, but you get actually hello in blue text with a red background. And the red background is only for the area that the letters take up, so the background's gonna be very small. Um, but what if you wanted the entire screen uh, to be that red color? So what we could do is uh, debt five, oop, debt five, and then the color. So in this case, it's 224. And because the background is like that, and by default text is transparent, we don't actually need to set the background color of the text anymore. Um, so this will turn everything, uh, this will turn the entire background red. That's what debt five does. Okay, so we compile the program, let's run it. The entire background's red, and you can see we have the text hello in blue. Okay, so one more thing that we're going to talk about uh, in this episode probably, and then uh, I'm going to log off, uh, is text scaling. And so, again, another thing that I just want to point out real quick, this debt 5 and debt 21 is happening before our text command. So down here we could do um, just like dead 21 and then uh, color 0 which will set the text color to black and then we could do some more text and what this will do is um, it'll take the formatting from here and apply it to text. So this format will override this format. But hello won't get affected by this format because hello came uh, before it. So uh, any formatting that you want to do, you have to apply it before the text happens. So if we run ice, compile the program, and then run the program again, you can see that we get test, and test is in black, unlike the blue hello. Okay, so let's go back into test source and quickly let's just do some text scaling. So what text scaling does is it changes the scale of the text. So a scale of 1 would be default text size like you've been seeing and we can end up just going to larger scales. So our scale command is going to be debt 74 and I didn't mean to do that. Um, so debt 74 and then we have an X scale and a Y scale. So to scale it up to size four, we would just do four and four. So four times X and four times Y. And this will apply to anything below it, which means that not only will this hello be affected, but because we haven't changed the scaling before text, before test, test will also be affected. So we changed the color of test, but we didn't change the scaling, which means they should both be the same size. If we were in test, then you'll see they're both quite large. Okay, so what if we want to change the scaling of only one of them to make the letters fat or thin? So what we can do is, uh, I'm just going to change the formatting for only the test section. Uh, we can do 74, um, and then instead of keeping these the same, say I want them to be four scaled width again, but I want them to be taller. So I could give it a height scale of six, which means that the letters will be the four wide width, but six times taller than normal. Uh, so I'm going to run ice. Uh, compile test source. I'm going to run test and you can see that test is actually taller than hello is. Uh, but the letters are actually the same width. Okay, so that's about all I have for today. I believe I've hit everything. Um, 
now these can be these um, instead of just doing words and quotations you can replace these with strings but I'm going to talk about variable types in a future episode so for now that's it I hope you enjoyed 